All of this is uh, right outside of Shootsbury. So we're going up uh, Moosehorn Road. And uh, this, is, this is rural Western Mass. This is beautiful. And this is where the future of education is. Lucky to land in this setting where it was a one school district. And at the time there were no textbooks used in the school. Everyone was inventing curriculum that was based on uh, real life connections. Right. And so that was where I, that was the, how I learned to teach through that. And because the school was so small with only five teachers and one school committee, as long as the kids were doing well, people sort of allowed that to happen. So for 30 years we used no textbooks. We built our curriculum around uh, connecting kids to the world. And we also were in this small town where there were the, pretty much the town is run by volunteers. So the kind of things that people are paid to do in a normal town, a big city, like check for radon or check the quality of water or do demographic studies or do census work, we could have students do all that work as a service. But if I were meeting with a superintendent or a legislator, the first thing I would do is pull out graphs of test scores. And when you go into an urban superintendent or a legislator or an urban principal's, what they're worried about is what they're accountable for right now. And you have to address that first. And if they say, wow, this, you know, the schools that you're working with are doing really well on tests, how do you do that? Then I can pull out this stuff and say, well, we have a really different approach. It's a project-based approach that trusts kids to create great things. So project-based learning the way Ron does it, the project is how you learn, or it's a central part of how you learn. It doesn't mean that there's not other pieces, but it's very central to the unit. Spending your time memorizing stuff for paper and pencil tests is not the way to get ready for the world. It's the wrong use of kids' time. We would you know, we would do an assignment, and then we'd get together on the weekend, and we'd look at every student's assignment, and we would decide for that child, was that assignment worth a check or not? And the very first assignment that we evaluated that way, we made sure that nobody got a check. So you set the bar high by having, making sure that not anybody succeeds on that first try. Everybody could do something to make it better. Um, and then using his culture of drafting and critique, you're just constantly bringing work up in front of a group or bringing work up in front of a partner and getting feedback and making it better. When you look at this kind of work, it, you think, oh, well, that must be really hard for kids to do. But that's because if you look at the whole process, you think, this is the process that adult professionals do when they design anything. They go through lots of drafts and get lots of critique, and it's public. They get critique from the group. They get critique from professionals. You work. So when kids go through this process, this is what makes them engaged and accountable. It's not because they're going to get a test on it. It's because they're trying to create something beautiful and important. I, I kind of feel like in the early 70s when it, w all the people in one really small sector of the country were recycling and other people kind of made fun of them, like what a ridiculous thing to waste your time sorting bottles out of your trash and all that. It, it was almost a joke, the whole recycling movement, and it was just a few hippies and environmentalists who did it. Back then, it was it sort of unimaginable that nationally, everyone would, of course, recycle all the time. It would be sort of the way the country works. But now, that's the way it is. Every city in America, it's like recycling is has to be the way it is. I feel like 21st century skills in education are exactly that way. I think people are asleep about the fact that the old version of how to teach is just, has to end. I, and they haven't woken up to it yet. If the standards are the broad concepts of disciplines, so if the standards are kids will learn to think as scientists, to learn experimental technique. He would have done astronomy, and he would have learned what do astronomers do, and how do you stay with the topic long enough to actually imagine yourself being a person in that field. A lot of people feel like, um, trusting young kids with real original research is something that they wouldn't do. And what I learned was that very few undergraduates in college are even trusted to do real research. And what I loved about John Reed is that he took his freshman college students and brought them out into the field to do geological research, and they published papers together where the kids' names were on the paper. By the time they were a sophomore in college, they already had published papers in geological journals. And I, he, he turned so many kids into geologists by that process of putting them on, not making them learn the basics 
in the hope that in 10 years when they get their PhD they can do real research, but having them learn the basics as they're doing real research that they're going to publish. And, um, and I thought, well, why not get my sixth graders doing research with his college students? And he, so it was, I, I had lots of great mentors in that process. Right. My son's in environmental studies now in college, and he says it's because of the field trips that he took in fourth grade with you and uh, Ken. Ken. And then when he got in sixth grade and he went on these trips, they drove three, four hours to go dig rocks in the ground, dig minerals, you know, like. And so last year he was a freshman at UVM, and he called me and he said, Mom, this is just like fourth and fifth sixth grade at Shutesbury. <laughs> mm. When we studied architecture, they, they did the work of architects. They designed, they, do, they did a blueprint for a house. And they had architects come and talk to them. And they, you know, there's just so much that this piece that, like, you take on a vocation. Mm. And you learn a lot about everything you need to do to have that vocation. And this goes through, this goes through multiple drafts before it gets absolutely. to this level. Like critiques, oh, yeah. peer review. I don't think I've ever met kids in any neighborhood, in any school in America, where they don't look at these and immediately want to start designing their own house. Right. Like, all it takes is looking at, at things like this. And immediately... Kids are like, well, I already have ideas of what I want in my house. That the best way to motivate people to bust their butts, to study hard and learn things and create great stuff, is to have a reason for it, where they're creating something that they're going to be proud of. And that that gets kids or teachers studying hard. So the exhibition I'm learning, the reason I love working for this organization is that when we do teacher development, we do the same things with teachers as we do with kids. Uh, this was a three-year project that Ron and I did. We had to um, raise money to buy a kiln and pay for the glazes and the clay and all the equipment. And then the second year, we had um, community members come and make families, actually, make a tile together. We had three different Saturdays where people could come. And then um, we had high school kids do the glazing. And then we had, it took a year to put it up, and you know we had community members come and put it up a lot. Of, it was all about engaging the community in the elementary school, and he wanted to make sure it wasn't just going to be the families who had kids here. It was going to be sort of the history of the town. Accountability stops being being on page thirty two in a textbook, and the accountability is the kind of quality of work your kids are doing, the kind of people that they are, in addition to the test scores that they do. But all three of them, I mean, teachers and schools should be accountable. But they should be accountable for the results, not accountable for following a script. But the story I was going to tell, we were playing, it was a staff versus sixth grade basketball game. And of course the staff all dressed up funny and you know made it a fun game, and the sixth graders won. And um, we had a student in our class that year who, who had had a very challenging year before that and was sort of transitioned back into our school and had a one-to-one. -one. We had sort of been sort of helping him along through the year. And this little kid came running up to him and said, can I have your autograph? And he, he read it all, all fast and sloppy and he said, oh, that's just a draft. <laughs> <laughs>